All right, I wanted to talk about this exchange here between Dan Connolly. He writes for The Athletic, covers the Baltimore Orioles. He's actually been in Baltimore for like two decades. And John Angelos, who is the CEO of the Baltimore Orioles. This was yesterday in Baltimore, I believe at Camden Yards. And it was a joint press conference between Angelos and the Baltimore mayor. And Connolly was asking John, Con uh, John Angelos, excuse me, about the team's future. Is the family, the Angelos family, are they going to sell the team at some point? Angelos does not speak to the Baltimore media often. He has spoken to the Baltimore media twice in the last four years. So I just wanted to put some context out there before I play this video and this exchange. I think Dan Connolly, I'm just going to say first here, I think Dan Connolly did everything right here. He is not in the wrong. When the owner only speaks twice in four years, the owner should be, or the, the president, the CEO of this team, should be expecting questions about the Baltimore Orioles and the future of the Baltimore Orioles. Because this is like the only time the reporters are, are going to get the chance to ask him about this stuff. So here is the exchange, and I'll pause it sometimes during the video um, just to give my thoughts on it, you know, to talk about certain things that are said here. This is, this, by the way, this video credit to Paul Gessler. Uh, he is a reporter. Uh, he posted this video. Here's the exchange between Connolly and CEO John Angelos. John, you, you have said many times that the Orioles are staying here for the long haul. But there are questions about what's going on with the Angelos family situation. Um, he brought up the lease. There's, there's other questions concerning your ownership of this team. And obviously you're investing in here as the Orioles, but it's also you that are you and the Angelos family that is investing. So what is your situation and your plan given some of the things that have been swirling for the Orioles and the Angelos family in a year, three years, five years, 10 years, what do you see as your relationship with this team? And also, do you have any concerns about setting things up like this mayor and then have you know, a change in ownership and it not being the Angelos Thanks, family. May I start on this? Yeah. So you're not going to take me up on the Martin Luther King Jr. part, are you now? Look, <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm going to, but I'm going to take you a little bit to task on it. Okay. With all due respect. All right. So immediately I'm going to take you up to task on that. So Connolly's just asking about the future of the franchise. And I thought he asked a valid question to the mayor about if he wants to be in this, you know, relationship here when you don't know committing to a relationship here with the Orioles and all that, not knowing if this ownership is going to be there, you know, long term. Uh, by the way, this press conference here, it was for the Orioles. I believe they're donating millions of dollars to uh, a, a certain organization in Baltimore uh, to help kids get through college, you know, who don't have the money, the financial uh, resources to do so. I just want to double check here. I just want to. The College Bound Foundation, because I just want to mention that, why this press conference was held. This was not a press conference held so Angelos could talk about the Orioles, but it's the second time in four years that he's talked to the public, so it, it does make sense for Dan Connolly to be doing his job, right? Reporting on the team, talking about the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, the College Bound Foundation, $5 million commitment by the Baltimore Orioles. Again, this was a joint press conference with Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. So let's resume this. Respect. That's not an appropriate subject matter for this day. This day is about young people who are attempting. And by the way, to, I'm going to answer your question, but that's not appropriate. Martin Martin Luther King. I, I explained earlier what what you know, a, a very esteemed professor once uh, presented to a group in Baltimore City that I was a part of, and she said that only next to the state of Mississippi had there been more red line, lining than there had been in Baltimore City. There's a vicious, virulent amount of racism historically through this country. And part of what we're trying to do here is change that. 
So it's really not important. It's really not important at all in the grand scheme of things to people that are clear thinking and who mean well and have a perspective. To All right, right there. So he's saying like Dan Connolly's not clear thinking, doesn't have perspective. Well, he's wrong on that. I'm reading Dan Connolly's article right now out of The Athletic, and he mentioned the importance of MLK Day and all that. Let me find this part about him understanding the significance. So here we go. This is from The Athletic, his article about this press conference and stuff. So here we go. The Orioles commitment basically matched the foundation's annual operating budget and impressive donation, and they chose to announce it on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I understand both the significance of the investment and the reason for the timing. So he does understand the significance and the reason for the timing of this announcement. He's also there to do his job. Let's resume Angelos' comments. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, while well, we're talking about putting kids that don't have a shot in hell of anything because of where they were born through college to be talking about those kinds of things. So I'm going to object to that question today in this forum before the mayor of Baltimore and all of these people. Do we, do we understand each other? Do you, do you understand my complaint? I'm not asking well, you. No, no, I, wait I, a second. I, I want to finish my comics. Hang on. Wait. So he just asked Connolly, do you understand? So a asking a question, and then he cut him off when Connolly was trying to answer the question. Come on, man. I want to answer your you question. You just asked me a question. That's why I was doing a comment. But you go ahead. You finish yourself. You know, I find that to be highly inappropriate, and I think that your focus is completely out of touch. Oh. It has no perspective whatsoever on what real-world people face and what the real pillar and role of an organization like the Orioles and Ravens ought to be. Now, out of touch, calling Dan Connolly out of touch and not knowing what real people face in the world. I'm pretty sure Connolly knows what real people face in the world. I mean... For John Angelos to be saying that when his family is why he's in the position that he is in, out of touch, I don't think he should be calling other people out of touch, to be honest. My family owns over 70% of the Orioles. You, you want to write that down? I know that. Keep going. Well, that's funny you do. I don't think most people know that, actually. Ah. Well, I get paid to cover your team, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, got him. Well, really know it unless you call, unless you read the cap table. So I'm volunteering that to you. Okay. Number one. Number two. Okay, we're not going anywhere. Number three, the principal owners are Georgia and Peter Angelos. And number four, you see what we're doing here in the community. You also know that in let 36 months with an 18 month overlay of COVID. We were able to turn the entire team around, one of the top five or seven or eight or ten, I don't know, you, you probably do know that, um, reversals in the history of Major League Baseball, while also taking the minor league system from 25th to 1st. I actually... Hang on, I wanted to pause that, because while he's talking about the farm system and the Orioles baseball team, a couple minutes ago, he just said that he wasn't going to answer the question. And he wasn't going to talk about this on MLK Day. But then he continues to talk about his baseball team and how great this turnaround has been for the Orioles. So he's willing to do that, but he's not willing to talk about the team's finances. I actually don't know, and you may know this too, I don't know of any team, I did ask our folks to look at it, that have ever, ever had two number one prospects in baseball back to back, but that there may have been others. So I just think, are you from here? Yes, I am. Wow. Okay, I just think that we all are. Are you from here? Are you from here? That See that that's, that's not, that's not a good look. I don't think on Angelos's part either because Dan Connolly says in his article, that he's been working in Baltimore for two decades. 22 years. He's covered the Orioles for 22 years. 
Let's resume this. Ought to have a little perspective on what's important in the world. And what's important in the world is what we're talking about. What you're talking about, you can find any garden variety, high value sports team or involvement. You're always going to have some controversy. But I've been very outspoken. I'm very transparent. In fact, in fact, I would invite you and all your colleagues next week, not on Martin Luther King Day. You can come back to this building. You can meet me in this office. I'll take you down to the third floor, and I'll show you the financials of the Orioles. I'll show you the governance of the Orioles. I'll show you everything you want to know, and I'll put all your questions. But today, Wow, that, okay, so he is offering, I mean, I guess I credit Angelos here, offering the media to go to Camden Yards, and he'll unveil everything about the Baltimore Orioles, all their finances, all of it. Teams don't do that, though. And when he says he's transparent and he's open about the organization, I think Orioles fans, I'm not an Orioles fan, I'm just a baseball fan. I think Orioles fans would say that that's not true. He spoke to the media twice in the last four years. Is that being transparent and open? No, he could be talking to the media more than he is. But he's not. Day on MLK, this is the Orioles. I'll show you everything you want to know, and I'll put all your questions. But today, on MLK Day, I'm not answering any of those questions. Okay, well, let me just respond very quickly. And no, say no, that, I don't want you to respond. Well, I just, I'm well, not going to entertain those questions. I don't want you to respond is what Angelos is saying. But he just went and, like, attacked Dan Connolly, and now Connolly's not allowed to respond to him? Is that fair? That, that doesn't seem fair to me. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Which is the day that you set up for us to talk to you. This is the second time that we have spoken to you in four years. Openly. Let's take another question. So let's take and, another and, and let me let's take another question. Let me ask one more question here. No, I'm not gonna let you to ask any more questions because you're highly it's highly inappropriate on the day on Martin said, Luther King Jr. Day. I'm gonna actually limit two more questions so the mayor can make his next obligation of the police committee. All right, there we go. So cutting off Dan Connolly, not allowing him to fully respond after, again, Angelos goes on this whole, like, oh, I don't want to say it's a rant, but pretty much just puts Dan Connolly down. Like, just, do you, are you from here? I'm not going to discuss this on Martin Luther King Jr. Day even though I've sp spoke to the media twice in the last four years, you're out of touch. Like, was there a reason for him to do that? He could have just said, I'm not answering this right now. I, I can get into that at a later time. But then, but no, he, he didn't do that. He instead tried to embarrass Dan Connolly. But props to Dan Connolly. That's, what I, that's my viewpoint on this. Props to Dan Connolly for having the guts to do this and continue to ask questions to Angelos. And when he said, next question, next question, move on, he continued to try to ask because that's his job. He's doing his job. It would be one thing if Angelos talked to the media, you know, twice a year or, you know, three times a year or once a year even, but twice in the last four years, according to Dan Connolly, is how many times John Angelos has talked to the media. So this is like, going to be the last time in a long time that the media would probably get to talk to Angelos. So I think it would be Angelos's duty to answer every question that he is asked instead of making this about him. That's what happened here. He made this press conference that was supposed to be on MLK Day about the $5 million donation or whatever uh, to help kids out, get through college, pay for college, he made it about him because now the focus, it's not on that. The focus is on him putting down, trying to put down this reporter. And that's not right.